Got it. Right, bread. That was gross. I'm gonna have gum now. <laughs> sounds like you said rye right, bread. <laughs> sounds like you said I'm gonna have gum. Shaggy Goose Egg Boys, and welcome to another scene of Al Pacino's prison scene. <laughs> um, this is weird. I hope- I'm not the one that does this. Did we uh, start? Yeah, shut up. Sorry to introduce you. <laughs> uh, maybe we're going to call this a summer series. I don't really know. We're going to see what happens. Uh, I'm 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 Jake. Where's the gain at? There it's, it is. No, that's the gain. Oh, that's a- I'm Jake. You're your your boy. Oh, I'm I'm Kyle. Chris. All right, see. <laughs> my name is Chris. I screeched because my nickname is Nighthawk. So, as you all know, um, yeah, that explains it. Supposedly, we're taking a break from the podcast, but I wanted to keep doing it. Thomas has stepped away for a little bit, but like he said, he'll be back. So, I did still want to do this because I like doing this. So, we're gonna finish out the email recommendations and maybe we'll stop from there. We'll see. This is a little test run for now. Um, and I don't know how, how to do this. Usually Thomas does it. So. Well, you got two boyos here helping you. So. Yeah. I'm a man. <laughs> Chris, you're a man. Jake, before I came here, I actually thought to myself, how long will we go into this podcast before you bring up that fucking show? Look, I don't even think it's been five minutes. I <laughs> yeah, It's been less than two. He, he said, hey, I'm Jake. You ever see? I think you should leave. I, look, I love that show. Yeah, I, I, I haven't even I haven't even told what we're doing today. Okay, so today on Al Pacino's prison scene podcast, uh, podcast we have an a email from a Mr. Connor Bindel. Yeah? Connor? I don't really know. No. <laughs> subject nice. subject says you have no good podcast ideas, and honestly, that's rough. That kind of hurts. But I also have a question: Are you referring to the movies or the general concept of the podcast? I think he's. I think he's talking about the movies. If there's no other context, I think he's talking about the movies. All right. Well, you need then, something that that gives you some clickbait, like the movie that we may be discussing today. Which is, and this is the this is the body of the paragraph. All it says is the Leprechaun Four. That's the body of the paragraph. It, it, shut the fuck up! I'm not done yet. <laughs> the body of the paragraph says the Leprechaun Four in space. Oh, okay. Kyle, what's the root word of Leprechaun? Because I always think leper. No, it's uh... and the Leprechaun in the the Leprechaun in the lep, the Leprechaun. He kind of looks like a leopard. Shouldn't the root word, if it's in the middle, be perk? Like Percocet? Well, no, root doesn't dude, always mean in the, the middle. What the hell? <laughs> root word does not mean just the middle. Oh my god. Jesus. No, it, it means something ar- around the around short um, in in whatever the, like, what's Celtic is the Irish language. So oh. it, it means something. Kyle did research because he's a smart boy, I guess. It, it I'm mean, here for comedic effect. It, it means something in a, something short. I can't remember the actual Irish word. Uh, or Irish word, the Celtic word that they use. But that's... All right, before we go any further, let's uh, do a little recap. I don't know if Chris is going to be able to do it. He's the one taking over. I might not be able to because so... now I'm scared. I might speak it myself. Speaking of which, Chris does have a hat on just for this recap. All right. Do you get it? So... Ever since I gave him that NASA hat. Do you, yeah, do you get I've it? I've been wearing hats since then. Yes, I get it. Because no it's cap. a cap. No cap. All right. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, Leprechaun 4 in space opens in space with our crew of about seven people. I think it's... Uh... I'll look directly into my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, like, look down for this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is going smoothly. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. My mother does listen to this, by the way, so... Hello. You said fuck at least five hey, times. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I also said little. <laughs> yeah. 
okay, 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 okay. Leprechaun 4 in space opens in space with our humble crew getting ready for a search and destroy mission of the Leprechaun. <laughs> Next bullet. <laughs> Uh, as they're getting ready, this uh, like this doctor scientist lady like comes in and says, "Hey, I'm Doctor Reeves, and I need to join your crew to take to take alien uh, uh, things for Doctor Mittenhan, who we haven't shown yet." And then the sergeant with half a head says, "Bullshit, bullshit!" And then he gets on the intercom with Doctor Mittenhan. Mittenhan's like, "Hey, she's cool. Let her go." And so they go on the mission, and as they're going on the mission to find the cave of the leprechaun who was in space, the leprechaun has abducted this uh, alien princess named is Zarina. His, is his name just a leprechaun? Yeah. yeah. yeah they call him the name. alien. They only they only refer to him as the alien. Well, we'll, we'll get to that, because yeah. I have okay. a question about that. Yeah. yeah, okay. So anyway, he's talking to Princess Zarina and saying, hey, bitch, uh, I want to be a royal king. <laughs> I want to be a royal king, so how about you marry me? And she's like, no. And he's like, I'll give you gold. And she's like, okay, fuck yeah. And so the crew goes over to his uh, cave, and Lucky, who has um, a little little rabbit foot on his uh, rifle, I'll, I'll talk about that later, um, he not so lucky because he finds the gold of the leprechaun. And the leprechaun's like, hey, I got a visitor. And so he goes and he takes his cane and he turns it into a lightsaber and kills Lucky. Lucky is the first one to die. Um, not and, a black guy. Yeah, not. There is a black guy. That's another and note. the black guy does and, not die and, first. And, and he does not. Progressive. Yeah, yeah. Very it's progressive 2002 movie. 2002 or three. 1997. Very progressive movie. The fourth movie. one? Yeah, it's like 1996. Here, you keep talking. No. I'll look it up. No, it's 1997. I'll you look keep talking. You don't have to. It's 1997. Okay, it's not, but keep talking. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, the crew has a shootout with the leprechaun, and in it, uh, K.O. Kowalski throws a grenade and kills the leprechaun, and Zarina passes out. In celebration of his victory, K.O. Kowalski does a little victory pee on leprechaun's corpse, and the essence of the leprechaun goes into his pee-pee. Uh, later... They all have a little party, and uh, K.O. Kowalski, and the only other female in the movie besides uh, Reeves, uh, decides to, you know, jerk his pee-pee a little bit, and they go off to do the sex. But uh, as they're about to do the sex, Kowalski's like, hey, don't grip my pee-pee so hard, and she's like, I'm not even touching it. And then That's Leprechaun sad. just kind of alien bursts out of his pee-pee, and then Kowalski dies. Yeah. All right, so uh, Mooch and Books goes into the waste disposal to search for the Leprechaun because they found out that uh, Kowalski is dead. The Leprechaun slashes Mooch's suit, making him a skeleton man because uh, I thought this was really cool. When they go into the waste disposal, uh, the, the big thing about it is that there's like uh, flesh eating flesh bacteria. bacteria, and that's how they get rid of the race. But you and know I'm what's like, crazy? What? Is the back of their suits are exposed. Yeah. Like like right around like yeah. the helmet part. Which I, I thought that was like a really neat way to like get rid of like waste in like a super low budget movie. That that was yeah. pretty cool. The, the like okay, anyway. Um <clears throat> Okay, after Mooch dies, it's like okay, three of our crew is dead, something's up. The crew goes and confronts Mittenhan about it, and in this, um Mittenhan like basically exposes himself. And, so, and forces them to stay and kill the leprechaun because he needs Zarina's body for some reason. And so they go and they hunt for the leprechaun. Uh, Martina's um, minority finally dies. Uh, he gets crushed. What do you mean finally? Huh? He was, <laughs> yeah, no, that? no, he was the first minority to die in the movie. You said that with real hate in your heart. I did not. I said it very matter-of-factly. Right, well, wait, wait, wait. Did, the girl, right. did the girl who jerked the pee-pee, did she die first? No, no she, she hasn't died She's yet. the last one to die. She's not sure. dead. Oh, that's she's right, because she's... Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, Dolores, yeah. And, yeah. And she's a woman, so it doesn't matter if she's a minority. Okay, yeah, so so uh, Martinez dies, he gets crushed. Dolores uh, fights off the leprechaun, but then leprechaun pushes her off of her bridge, so she did. And so now uh, Mittenhan tells Harold, the little pervy sidekick of Mittenhan, his plan about, like, hey, 
I'm a cyborg man and I need uh, Zarina's alien regrowth powers to be human again. And so Harold's like, okay, cool. That's that's actually what he says. He just goes, cool. And um, <laughs> uh, Better out than in I always say. The leprechaun uh, disguises himself as Reeves and says, hey, I'm naked, Harold. Open the door for me, please. And Harold's like, whatever you say, BB. And so... Um, he opens the door and Leprechaun stabs him in the pee pee, and uh, does, does no? He just whacks him. Yeah. No. He just, no. Wait, is that what happened? Yeah. Oh, I could not tell. He, I thought he just yeah, got I, whacked. I thought he, jabs, he just whacked him. Actually, no. Yeah, he jabs him in the pee pee. Yeah, because he's still because he, cane, cause he gets cane. up and like yeah okay. Okay. Well, anyway. Also, and, important to note: we do not see that woman naked when the Leprechaun impersonates her. No, because she that actress actually goes on to do shit. Like like she actually like. Is became a big actress. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. I, I thought you meant like in the context of the yeah. Movie. Okay, no. go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted. To um. Know. Okay. So noted. In the scene, uh, Mittenhand has a really cool conversation with a leprechaun, uh, in a way to distract him, and uh, Harold uh comes up and stabs leprechaun in the back. Leprechaun's like, hey, bitch, I, I can't die. What you thinking? And so he takes a little plate and uh, flattens Harold's head against the wall. And uh, Leprechaun wakes up Zarina. And uh, they basically take the blood that uh, Mittenham was extracting from her. And they like put it in a blender with uh, spiders and scorpions. And then like put it into a syringe and inject it into Mittenham's skull. Forming him into Mitten Spider. Yes. He's he's a big mutated beast. Uh, okay. After that, Leprechaun ambushes the uh, crew and takes the Sarge hostage. And then Zarina threatens them with their titty with her titties. And what that means from her culture is that when a woman of royal blood shows you your titties, that's a death sentence. I mean, you're gonna die. Yes. Okay, and then uh, they go and try to find Sarge. Sarge is now um, in drag, which is awesome, and he has nunchucks, and he starts fighting them. They're fighting him off, and then he goes to fight back, but then he actually, like, he takes, like, a sword, and he stabs it into, like, a into a breaker box, and then he... It's not a sword. It's gets, a bayonet. Like, it's a bayonetta. Yeah. It's a blade. No, not a bayonetta. Not a bayonetta. That's <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that from Smash Brothers? No, bayonetta's a game. <laughs> from Nintendo. Bayonetta's the oh, character yeah, yeah, yeah. in this Bayonetta. This recap is so fucking fluid. <laughs> okay. Speaking of fluids. I gotta pee. <laughs> I was gonna okay. say, I was like, you didn't end the movie, hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So, uh, Sarge gets fried because... He oh, his last board. thing is Mitten Spider. <laughs> yeah, I didn't finish this. <laughs> Alright, so... Um, yeah, Leprechaun goes and searches for his gold, which they have uh, shrunken for some reason. I can't remember why. But then he uses that shrink ray to make himself big so he can fight the remainder of the crew, Incorrect. which is... Okay. They well, use he, the shrink ray They on use him. the shrink ray on him, and it, and it, ba- and it backfires, and they he difference. becomes big. Which is kind of weird, because with him being magical, he can just kind of grow himself big. Anyway. Also, that means his pee-pee's big. Yeah, yeah but, we don't get, <laughs> but we don't get to see his pee-pee, do we? I thought it would have been the funniest joke that ever could have been told, is he goes, aha, a normal six inches. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's like 25 feet tall. Yeah. I think that would be hilarious. Yeah. All right, so anyway, uh, the remainder of the crew at this point is uh, Books, Sticks, and Reeves. And so uh, they fight each other off. At this point, um, the Leprechaun... Uh, started the self-destruct sequence for the ship and uh he has like a little shuttle safeguarded for himself and uh they're trying to like get the self-destruct to stop but they can't do it because they need a password for Mittenhand. and mittenhan is dead because reeves killed him because uh he was a mutated spider and, and tried to get her titties but she killed him um and and meanwhile, the black guy's still alive. The black guy's still alive. The black guy is actually uh, trying to get shit done. He's yeah. he's over at the control panel and he's trying to like type in the password for the uh, self destruct for the self destruct. Yeah. And so um, something something blah blah blah. Uh, 
Leprechaun <laughs> gets sucked out into space. He blows up. Yeah. And then they look out and they're like, hey, we did it. And then his hand floats up and it's a middle finger. But but they save themselves because they finally get to the... Um, the password. To the, to the control thing. And they guess the password and it's wizard. Mm-hmm. And we will explain why it is wizard. Because that's the end of the movie. That's the end we, of the recap. <laughs> we. <laughs> Jake will. Will, will Jake I? Will. Jake, or, Jake or Kyle. I'm why will done. I? I did my job <laughs> very poorly. Oh, so you're I, done I, now? I re- like, All right, bye, Chris. I recapped. I recapped. All right, bye, Chris. Hey, no, I'm gonna stay. Uh, there's a lot of like. I will get better at these recaps. I, I think that was that, so fucking that's, bad. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> All right, we're done with that now. It's okay. Um, it was more. Of a there's. Are you gonna shut the fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you just talked for like ten fucking minutes, man. <laughs> and Chris like. <laughs> Shut up. No anyway, one cares. Oh, he's like he's like Gata and Dave. Yeah, eat your dumbass. What are you Snickers, Snickers bar? Snickers. All right. Anyway, 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 anyway. Chomp, there's chomp, a chomp. <laughs> Sorry. There's a lot of influences in this film. I think, um, or maybe like small references that I think are very fascinating. Uh, one of the most notable ones, I think is when the leprechaun comes out of uh, Mooch's pee-pee with that. But also, they're going to the planet Ithacon. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if this is a reference, but... To Ithaca? Ithaca, that's oh, what yeah, I was yeah. thinking. Yeah. And then there's also um, oh, Zarina, which sounds eerily close to Zena. Zathora. Zena. <laughs> The Princess Warrior, which oh, leads me okay. into what I think this film is about. Okay, I think this is a feminist piece. Um, I can I, I can see that. that. I think I think uh, you're fundamentally I think you are fundamentally misguided. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. Uh, no, I'll, I'll just state. I'll let you go. On I'll that. kick you off. I'll just state explicitly. I'm not afraid. I think that this film is about attraction versus power, and specifically the bridge between them. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's a lot about what I wrote. So I'm just going to say that right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I wrote this the order. I should have included this in the end cap, but I wrote the order of when uh, every crew member is introduced. Because mm-hmm. right off the bat, it's just like names, character trait, names, character trait. Which yeah. I thought was really impressive for it's, it's very a efficient film. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys want to hear the sound of a gum thing opening? <laughs> Here's it closing. This has been ASMR brought to you by Al Pacino's presence. <laughs> okay. No, hold on. Well, okay. Well, while this. Jake's looking that up, um, I, I want to point out a quote that I wrote down that I think is pretty cool. And I believe the leprechaun is the one who says this. Okay, I got it. Um, too late. All right, so, already, say, already... <laughs> so say what you said again. What did I say? Uh, I... What I thought it was about? Yeah. Okay, I think it's about... Uh, oh, I said appearance versus power. But then you said something to me. You said... Okay, say it, I'm fundamentally wrong. Okay, you are fundamentally misguided. Okay. All right, well, here's one for you. Small though I am, mighty is my spirit. When bloody battle calls, come at me with what you will. Shoot me, stab me, kill me a hundred ways. Still, I fight on. I am eternal as the sun. I am a thousand demons from yeah. hell. Yeah. Death and destruction are my game. Agony is my name. <laughs> is that from anything? Because everything he says okay, is like a reference. So, so I, I agree. Um, but especially, that was especially the one thing this wasn't. So I, I looked it up. Uh, nothing he says is directly... Um, a quote from something. Yeah, it's like illusions. But he does say at one point, um, he's like he's like or some shake Shakespeare shit, mm-hmm. or he says, like Shakespeare says, shit yeah. happens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I looked at this up, and the closest thing I could find was the Saint Crispin speech from uh, King Henry. Okay. Uh, which is a Shakespeare play, one of his histories, mm-hmm. lesser known. Um. But he does have a lot of like just this uh, Shakespearean prose that does come about in his speech. Yeah. Because he has a couple of those and both of them are like in the same location. He's just walking and, yeah, it, in the hallway the set, and yeah. he's just like, hmm, I am a god. No mere man can strike thee down for I am the leprechaun yeah, yeah. king. Yeah. 
It's like he's just emulating something Shakespearean. That's yeah, yeah. Which which is why it's interesting that we have like Ithaca, uh, Xena. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple other things, but I don't remember. Yeah, um, I mean, no, I'd agree. And so uh, I, I watched the uh, the first three of these as well, just because I was curious if there was going to be any like uh, spillover between the uh, between the the different movies. There's not other than Warwick Davis is playing the leprechaun. But um, yeah, in, in all of them, though, he does have like it, it started out in the first two specifically. Like, almost everything he said always rhymed. And then afterwards, it just be it seemed to merge into more Shakespearean type, less rhyming, more. Uh, what would you say? Uh, more uh, soliloquy uh, statements. Yeah. Um, and so I, I just thought that was kind of interesting. The the differences that they chose uh for that is he um does he follow the same timeline and the other three or is it is it just no, completely it's, it's anthological like, yeah it's like they it's like they're not even in the same universe there's not even a reference to the past movies happening and even in the first movie it takes place whenever you know it was written and uh he's basically stuck in uh like a box for 10 years because a four-leaf clover trapped him in there and that's how they beat him in the first movie just by they, they, oh yeah, the, the little kid like balls up a four leaf clover around some gum and throws it in its mouth, and then they, and then they throw him down a well and blow him up, and then in the next movie he's like trying to find a wife, and uh, and he states there that he's like two thousand years old by the time the actual plot starts, whereas in the first movie he says he was six hundred years old, even though they only are like a few years apart, uh, and then the third one he's in Vegas. And they don't mention his age there, but it's again completely unrelated because he dies at the end of each of these, hmm. in, in a different way too. Second one is wrought iron. The third one they blow up his gold, or they 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 catch it on fire with a flamethrower, and then he catches on fire. So this might tie into your idea of attraction versus power because mm-hmm. it definitely is, I think, uh, a slasher film. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. And I typically hate slasher films. But I think that this one gets away. It it, it gets it for me um, because I, I do think it has a sort of like elevation, um, at least in like symbolism that slasher films don't generally have. And I think that that, that does it, it is it is attributed to the Pecan's character. Uh, but my point in saying that is typically in slasher films, the reason that a lot of people die is because they are committing some kind of sin yeah. whether it be sex drugs or rock and roll usually they usually it comes out of that and part of you know sexy times is attraction usually there's there's a love interest maybe that 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 can't come about because of one reason or the other so i think that i think that inherently being part of the slasher genre uh, lends itself to that idea. Yeah, and the reason I said that is because he states pretty much outright at the beginning that uh, he doesn't want to be treated like a dog, right? And and it's because of his appearance. Yeah. And he talks about that a lot, specifically his height. And uh, when he meets uh, the Mittenhand for the first time, like when they physically interact for the first time, uh, Mittenhand laughs at him for being a monster, mm-hmm. or looking like a monster at least. Or I guess uh, at that point he'd killed a bunch of people, so he is. But um but also uh mitten hand is like this basically he's just a human head and a neck and the rest of him's like computer and he has like an an arm as well and he, he he's also appearance wise is a monster and yet he finds elevation above even the leprechaun yeah he well he i think the interesting thing between the that um talk with the leprechaun and mitten hand is that that was the first time mitten hand didn't really talk down to someone for a minute, he kind of spoke with him like he was on his level. At, well, and, yeah, but even initially, though, like, again, like, he walked he, in, he's like, ha, ha, he, he laughed at laughing. him, yeah. but then Leprechaun insults him back, and he's like, oh, ha-ha, touche. Yeah. yeah. Touche. Yeah. And then he starts talking to him, and he's like, you and I are like peas in a pod. I am greedy. You are insatiable. Right. And and I thought that was great. Well, yeah. something, something with that interaction I think is very curious about the Leprechaun's character it, as a whole, at least in this film, I can't speak to the ones because I haven't seen him, but Mittenhand wants to control. Okay. The Leprechaun wishes for respect. Mm-hmm. Like you said, Kyle, he doesn't want to be treated like a dog. So he wishes for respect. Mm-hmm. 
Whereas Mittenhand wants to control with fear, Mm -hmm. which typically is a characteristic given to the antagonist of a film. And not to say that that Mittenhand certainly isn't an antagonist. Clearly, on the surface at least, the Leprechaun is the antagonist. But striving for respect is, is a much more an admirable cause than wishing to uh, control with fear. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, Relatively. Right. I mean, I, I mean, I don't have a problem with like striving for respect specifically. I, I think obviously with, with any good villain, it's a s- somewhat justified cause. Uh, but the means to get to that end is just uh uh, not humane. I think. Sure, and I, and I agree with that. But I think that I think typically when we when we imagine at least in filmmaking or any kind of storytelling that one who strives for respect is generally less mm-hmm. uh, word. Yeah, um, it, it less evil. Yeah, um, there you go. Yeah, no, I I would agree. And and even between the the four that I saw, I think this one. I like the third one a lot because I thought it actually gave the the hero characters like an actual character arc, um, and because it's like he basically turns into a leprechaun, like the main hero, and it's like his fight against greed, which mm-hmm. I thought was kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. But this one I really like because they painted the leprechaun in the best light. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, obviously, like the guy's like awful, <laughs> yeah. but you know, in the second one, he tried to rape a girl, you know, on oh. top of all the murdering and. Ah. And, and stealing and just like body gore and in this one yeah he kidnaps a princess you know yeah you can't uh, get off that but um i mean bowser you know he's yeah cool. well exactly oh, yeah. but he kidnaps her but then afterwards he's like hey i want you to be like an equal partner in this um and obviously that changes later but, well he also he also sacrifices his quote-unquote life yeah you know he does sacrifice her. his body yeah mm-hmm. which i thought was interesting there's a grenade and he's like look out yeah and he jumps. Oh yeah, it. yeah. He yeah. That's why she's he unconscious. He saves yeah. Zarina, but the thing, like, he knows that he can come back. Zarina is invaluable to him. That's true, but he still does yeah. do that. I think at this point, and and I think this movie isn't necessarily about greed. I think it's the step after greed. Oh, I I, I, I need you to uh, sit up. Sorry, I think um, it's more the result of greed because Mittenhan is the result of greed. He's the way he was because he tried to be more, and now he's trying to fix that. But you can't. Well, and I would, oh. and they all suffer because of that. Well, and I, I would say that on the surface. I would say that on the surface, this film definitely supposes to be about greed, and it's definitely not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, because again, the I, I think why this one's so interesting. Not only like is it just kind of an absurd idea on its face, just putting a leprechaun in, sp- in space. That's hilarious. Like, just the name alone was. I was like, I have to watch this. Yeah. Um, like the same way with Velocipaster. It's like I have to watch this. Like. Yeah, but, but Velocipaster is. Well, oh, yeah. no, I agree. That's an actual like terrible movie. That's great. Like, whereas this one is a terrible movie that I think is actually pretty good. Yeah. But it's. Yeah, I agree. It's a. Uh, it's just kind of interesting to me. Um, specifically and and i'm not i'm not sidestepping what you were saying but going back to um appearance versus powers there's a quote that the uh, the leprechaun uh has at some point and, and he says the path of power is always soaked in the blood of the innocents that's in one of his uh little soliloquies isn't it yeah yeah, yeah the and, second one yeah i believe I, I thought i thought that was such an amazing quote because essentially what it's a justification of his actions and in, in a mm. sense because he he believes himself to and there could be reason for this given his powers but that he he's uh he's an he has an elevated status above everybody else it's the same thing that the princess believes too i mean the whole reason that she goes along with him is because her father gave away all their riches to the mm. to the people and she's like i don't like that i'm a princess i should be able i should stand out above everybody else because i'm a princess just by the mere fact of my existence somehow i am better than others Mm. like that's that's what she's saying and and so and i think that that goes to their initial not like physical attraction towards each other but you know that that initial attraction that they have is because they do see themselves above everybody else and so like 
well, who cares if a few innocent people dies? I get what I want. Yeah. I I also, sorry, sorry. Say what you were going to say. Go ahead. Kind of piggybacking off of that, I think one of the biggest themes in this film is uh, loyalty. Um, it's it's said mm-hmm. at the beginning, uh, the motto of the crew is Semper Fi, do or die, kill, kill, kill. Semper Fi is an actual motto of the Marines, and it, it means... Uh, to stay faithful and to be loyal, uh, whether that be the the crew or to like the state, I I don't know exactly if it specifies. Um, yeah, but I feel like it kind of fluctuates in the movie because uh, their when, loyalty, their loyalty, yeah, and yeah. well, everybody's loyalty. Well, uh, z- sorry, I don't necessarily agree with that. Well, I, I think gonna... I think there are three people whose loyalty never wavers. Vanilla waivers. Yeah, no, no, I, I think I know what you mean, too. But um, I was going to say Zarina's loyalty to one, her king, and then uh, the leprechaun. And then um, I I kind of don't want to say this, but Sarge's loyalty kind of wavers a little bit. Because he's all about his crew, the safety of my crew, until that bonus is mentioned. Oh well, I think that goes. I think that I think that just plays into the part of like uh, the. Granted, it's kind of an ultimatum. But yeah, the yeah. the the obvious theme this is going for is greed. Yeah. Um. And I, but I, but I do think that 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 plays a part in loyalty. It's um. And then in that same aspect, the faith is like, how much do you believe in your team, or how much mm-hmm. do you respect or value your team that when you know a hundred times your salary is that enough to sacrifice your crew yeah or are you going to stick with them and by that point three people had already died exactly. like, it, and, it, and the leprechaun had died and come back like they knew that yeah they knew that that was uh, and he was risky. still he was still like a well, hundred times all right yeah. yeah which is everybody agreed too they did they did yeah. which well is an except Books did not necessarily agree. Yeah, he and what did he say? He said something like, "Well, if everybody else is going to do it, so will I." Kind Dolores of... stayed faithful because she said, "I'm not going to do it for the money. I'm a marine." Yeah. Oh yeah, no, yeah, no. She was she was doing it for the guy who died. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the, faith. The PP, the PP guy. That's, yeah. staying, that's staying faithful. Yeah. Um. In also, there's a there's a bit right um right when they get back and they're all at the party room initially. Like this is right after they go leave to go have PP sex. And um, I couldn't say that without laughing. I was trying not to. But um, yeah, no, just eat your Snickers, Chris. That's cool. <laughs> Dang, um, I kind of want some um, Cheez-Its. I have Cheez-Its at home. I have Cheez-Its at home, too. Well, yeah, well, I, yeah we're at your home. Um, you, Kyle. It, right after that happens, and uh, what's the main guy's name? Books? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Books, uh, also, they're sitting around drinking and uh and they go with their, hey. with their dollar store cups yeah 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 and they're drinking they're like hey yeah drinking for sex and books goes drinking for the marine that we lost mm-hmm. the one that they lost on the actual mission um yeah. at that point and i thought that was kind of interesting um it's it's like a respect of what's come before um and i and i think that's something that characterizes maybe a noble person um is uh i mean he has the ability to adapt in the present but the fact that like i said there is a respect of what's come before and an appreciation of the sacrifices brought to bring them there i think that's what paints him as kind of the hero figure uh and and i think that has something to do also with you know loyalty again to the to the to his to his fellow marines as well it's kind of like uh okoye what is that in black panther Oh, oh! I I thought you were talking about. Oh uh, no, she said she's a. Uh, I only know her. Uh, Namibia. Show. What's her name? Yeah. Nakia. Is that Nakia? That's the girl's name, right? It's called Nike. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> Black uh, Black, Panther, Black Panther's little sister. No, no. Or, that's wait, a. What are those? That's Shuri. No, oh, I think yeah, it's Nakia. Yeah. It's his awesome his little lover girl. Anyway. Oh, his Nakia, lover girl. Yeah, I Nakia, you, oh yeah, head of the uh, the guard. No, that's Okoye. Okay. Michelle. Okay. It, uh, yes. Uh, anyway, Nakia. After uh, um, it's called Nokia. Michael B. Jordan has tossed him off the cliff or whatever, and they're all running, and it's Nakia and Okoye in like the throne room, and Nakia's like, "Are you coming with us? We are leaving now." 
that might get me canceled. Yep. And uh, a cool <laughs> is like, she's like, she's like, uh, don't do it. She's like, my allegiance is, I'm not, I'm doing a Black Panther accent. <laughs> she said, that's not much better. That she might says, be worse. <laughs> she says, no, 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 no. I'm doing a Wakandan accent. Okay. She says, yeah. my, she says, my allegiance is to Wakanda. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah. So the same thing. Yeah. Books is like, books yeah. is like, books is like, uh, my allegiance. Is to- <laughs> my allegiance is to the Marines. <laughs> my allegiance is to Reeves. Yeah. Yeah. It, like the whole time he's just there for that ass. Also, Reeves strangely reminded me of the uh, love interest from Batman Forever. Oh, no, thank She's you. She's been in a lot of big no, movies. Thank you. I don't want to talk about those. Are so bad. Anyway, continue. Oh, uh, wait. What we, else? We do you, talk about what those. else do you have on your? Uh... Oh, um, well, I, I did look up um, just because I wanted to to talk about the fact that there is a link between attraction and power. Um, and, oh, well, I mean, for sure. Like, just right. take a look outside. Look at like you know, I mean, any kind of like anything. Yeah, good job. Uh, gold um, is power. That's a quote. Yeah, well, and yeah. gold is attractive, <clears throat> but that's his, that's his trait as a leprechaun is gold. Right. Yeah, and the leprechaun, you know, it's 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 uh, its fairy tale origin is essentially that of it's the embodiment of greed. Right. That's that's what the leprechaun is, um, and that's that's why um, I I don't understand what the cobbler aspect has to do. The shoe. Yeah, I don't understand what that has to do with the idea of the myth, um, but. At, at the very least, it, it, we, we can be sure that um, the leprechaun is supposed to be like the, the, the human embodiment, or maybe not human, but the actual living embodiment of the concept of of greed, right? Which is just an immeasurable uh, desire for something specific relative to the cost that would take on someone else, I think, is a good way to define greed. Go ahead, Chris. Okay. I'm about to make Mike very angry. By the way, why would you? Why were you raising your hand? No, yeah. I was. I was. I was. No, just, you definitely raised your I hand. I was just holding nope, it. Nope, nope, You raised just your to hand. Mark my place. Okay, he well, raised his mark hand your place. He grabbed his Snickers with his other hand. <laughs> He's like a raccoon, you know. Where they can't like. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm about to trigger Mike if he listens to this podcast. Paradoxical statement. Paradoxical statement of this movie. With great is, power comes great responsibility. The paradoxical <laughs> statement of this movie, I think, is, um. If gold is power, then why is the leprechaun searching for power? Yeah, that that's a great that's a great idea. Well, because I I don't necessarily I don't nec- again this is this is what I'm saying. I don't think that he's after necessarily power. I think he's after respect. Yeah, and he thinks the way to get that is through quote unquote power. Sure, but mm. the, 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 the end goal in mind is still that I have to obtain power. And it's like, it's power for the sake of getting respect, sure. But it's still, at, at the end of the day, it's still power. And then respect is just kind of within that, that circle of power, I, w- I would say. Well, I also think that part of that is like, let's take it back to the medieval times. Because that's what Princess Arena is, is some kind of like... Uh, Real quick, can I? Uh, I got a little uh, side thing I want to say. Um, a little Easter egg that I found just about true. leprechauns. Um, he says, "I will give you uh, wealth from like the four corners of the galaxy. Four corners meaning four leaf clover." Awesome. I, I didn't. I didn't know if that was like a that, that, that was that, intentional. I think because I don't think there are look, corners to a galaxy. Look, there ha- no, 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 it's, no. it's a ref. It's just the, like there's not four corners on the Earth as well. It's just it means like from everywhere. No, I think I think it was a reference to the four leaf clover. I don't yeah. think it was because I here's the thing, was. Kyle. Everything is intentional. Yes. No. In it was, Leprechaun it was Four very... in space, <laughs> everything is intentional. No, everything. Look the way, and, I, and I've talked. I've said it was this. clearly just because they're in space. He no, no, can't no. say four corners nope. of the globe. Incorrect. That's it. Nope. Instead of let, Leprechaun no, no. Four me, being no, no. Leprechaun just, in uh, space, hey. it's Leprechaun Four colon, colon. in <laughs> space. That's intentional, is it? <laughs> is it? No, it has to be. Here's the okay. thing. And I've said this before to all you Shaggy Gusek boys. When I when we talk about a film on this podcast. I go in and I look at everything with the supposition that everything placed is intentional. Thank you for giving me gum, but I'm good. Thank you. 
You are you eating another piece? What are you doing? You, you can't just drink it. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, many, for those of you, you got in your mouth. For those of you who can't see, Chris has like like a like a one of those things of gum. What do you mean for those of you who can't see? It's everybody who's not in this room right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so everybody who can't see. <laughs> no, you said those of you who can't see. <laughs> It implies. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, no, like it makes sense. There's seven billion minus. Like it's everybody on Earth minus three who Look, can't see. And that's not everybody. Okay. Chris, Chris turn your phone off. That's my dad. <laughs> anyway, what was I talking about? I don't know. Oh yeah, for those of you who can't see. <laughs> Uh, Chris uh, the gum. He went. He went. She went. He went. And he and he poured a bunch in his mouth. And now he looks like I a, have like ten pieces of gum in my mouth. And now he looks like a chipmunk. It's true. I'm salivating a lot. Yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> looking at Zenos. My breakfast is gonna smell super fucking fresh. <laughs> Your breakfast? <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I heard. <laughs> what was I talking about before? Oh yeah. Anyway, I operate under the assumption that everything is intentional and has meaning. Right, and I think that was intentional. I just don't. No, think no, it no, was, no, no. It does. I don't think it was nope. a reference to a four-leaf clover. Like, Incorrect. Just, How can it not? Because again, I'm not? saying they took the. No. <laughs> this is not a complicated thing. They took the idea of all right, the four all right, corners of the, of the globe and they just expanded it right, into listeners. the galaxy. All right, listeners. Let us know if you think it's a reference to the yeah, four leaf clover. Yeah, you no, you're not a listener. I'm, I'm us, listening right no. now, bitch. <laughs> I don't see you listening. <laughs> you got the fucking ears. <laughs> um, <laughs> listeners, Shaggy Goose Egg Boys, let us know if you think it's a reference to the four leaf clover <laughs> or to the is a play on the adage four corners of the world or whatever. Yeah, globe specifically. Every hole in my face is like so open right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, it's Mentos gone, by the way, and I and I ate about eleven. What happened to ten? Uh, uh, He's like, I adjusted another. It, it feels like eleven. Turn it up to eleven. Um, ten just, bu- hey, ten bucks to ever gets that. Um, I just want to uh, to bring up the fact that I, I did I did read an entire not an entire but I read a. Uh, this is, this is Kyle trying to flex right now. Well, yeah, it's like I did this. I want to at least mention the fact that I did it. <laughs> it I, I read it's a uh, it's from a 1998 uh, American Journal of Sociology uh, report, <sighs> um, and it and it was trying to find the link between attractiveness and success. And this is um, <clears throat> this is a quote from it. it. Said results indicate that subjects are more likely to interplay and to cooperate with others they find attractive. Men who see themselves. It's not what what. <laughs> I'm just looking. Oh, okay, at I like, thought you were like, okay. No, I just, no, no. I just hear him going <laughs> behind me. <laughs> Jesus Christ! He's got icy breath. He's sub zero. This would be so much less painful I for the viewers if this was sub zero. If this was like video tape. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Chris. Anyway, Kyle. yeah, you didn't bring a full battery. So. You have a camera. <clears throat> so, anyways, um, men who see themselves as more attractive more often cooperate than other men. While women who see themselves as more attractive less often cooperate than other women. Um, in addition, subjects who rate themselves as highly attractive are more likely to cooperate with others they see as also highly attractive. And I thought that was specifically interesting, the differences between men and women here. Oh, canceled. Um, <laughs> um, but it, it's the idea is that men who see themselves as attractive are more often likely to cooperate with other men, whether or not they're attractive. Whereas with women, it's the opposite. If they're attractive, they're less likely to cooperate with other women. Well, look at me. I'm a sexy beast, and I'm talking to you bozos right now. Yeah, so that makes sense. Um, but I just I just thought that was kind of interesting. And... <laughs> <laughs> I can't we, – we can't do anything with Chris around – I'm trying to have a conversation, and Chris is just over there. Yeah. Chris is just over there, just jump, jump. He goes, "Oh God, I can smell just just mint everywhere right now." <laughs> Don't breathe on me, you sick, sick individual. Um, <clears throat> stop looking at me. <laughs> I'm gonna cough this cough this up like a furball at the end of the show. 
I also wanted to talk about, uh, again, going on that idea where the most attractive people, and I put quotes around that, most attractive people are the main leads. Because it's in a relative the main, term. Right. Well, it is. Like, well, it goes into the idea of, well, you know, what is beauty? Right. What is attractive? In the eye of the beholder. Sure. Yeah. But it's something that's aesthetically pleasing. And yeah, that, that does differ on an individual basis. Aesthetic. Obviously. What are you looking at? Uh, no. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> yeah, we know what he's looking at. You know. You, you know, know the person I'm talking hey, to. If you're listening. If you're listening, you know. You know. You better be listening. I don't think they do, though. It makes me kind of sad. Baby. We should have recorded it. Okay, Chris. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, dude. Ew. <laughs> 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 All right, go back to what you were saying. Um, it's like the cell podcast is just like laughter. Yeah, <laughs> and it sucks because the laughter peaks. Oh yeah, but talking does not. Yeah, that's rough, man. No one else peaks. Harold, he's a fucking pervert. Should we talk about that? I think we should. Which one? Who? Harold. Which one's Harold? The guy who tries to uh, have sexy time with Zarina when oh, she's asleep. Oh yeah, that awesome. was that was bad. Yeah, but I think there's a reason for that because it's a feminist piece. I mean, greed of of lust of booty. Well, that's just lust, and and that kills Ko. Who? Yeah. Ko. Ko. Ko Kowalski. Yeah. Oh, his name's Kowalski, not Ko. Yeah. His name's Mike. No, Kowalski. they call him Ko. Yeah, that's what his nickname. He's a knockout. Boom. I watched it with subtitles. I have Boom. like. I have like. All right, are you done talking about your little thing? No, I'm not because I keep getting interrupted. I'm just going to say that the main heroes are conventionally attractive, um, and I thought it was interesting oh, as always. well that the um, and again they are successful, right? Whereas the unattractive Leprechaun and Doctor Mittenhan, uh, he and fails. Yeah, um, and we don't really know the fate of the princess in the end. I just kind of realized that, like. She's alive, but we don't oh, know yeah, what happens to right. her. It just kind of ends. And I thought that was kind of interesting, the fact that she was pretty much a villain throughout the entire piece. Do they um, return her? Does she kill her? Yeah, I mean... Well, like, I yeah. think I think what might, that might be speaking to is that, like, at the end of the day, power, power, whatever, royalty or whatever, you're just the same as everybody else. Yeah. Well, You I, can get blowed up just like everyone else. Well, no, I think because, again, because she is attractive... That the reason, even though she was a bad guy for the film, she still, you know, pretty much gets off scot free, as far as yeah. we know. Well, she's also very attractive. Well, that's what I'm I, saying. Yeah, yeah. And also, also, just because you are a bad guy does, does not mean you, you bad, bad, bad guy. guy. But she's yeah. a bad guy. She's a fucking bitch. But um, hey, hey, I we're think... not talking about your future wife here. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa! <laughs> whoa. Jesus Christ! That's just a block of green. <laughs> <laughs> um no uh th- there's a really really funny part it, it caught me off guard it's where zarina uh flashes her titties and to, to, no no yeah, no that, I gotta, was, that I, was real funny i, I, I got i watched this movie with my grandparents and i was like oh, <laughs> not expecting that <laughs> yeah i bet you watched that scene the second time right uh <laughs> anyway we fucking know you do carl um <laughs> I'll have you know I only watched it four times. No, my, that's all my, it took. my point is like her, her, uh, <laughs> just just to humor. Which I think the reason that she did that is just so the director can have an excuse to to have Incorrect. one of her actresses. Everything's intentional. Change. No, Everything it's definitely intentional. intentional, and that was probably the intention in, behind it. Different in, intentional, <laughs> but humoring the idea that it actually was a cold. It, it is like a cultural thing from like a foreign. <laughs> Uh, tribe or whatever that i mean that's totally plausible yeah that um showing sex appeal means uh like like it's a threatening thing well see I, and that can play I, into what you're yeah what you guys i, I was gonna bring that up. i felt as though it was more of like an empowerment kind of thing yeah well yeah yeah a female empowerment. Also, also, it's exclusively it's Hence. not it's not just females it's, it's royal. exclusively royal blood yeah and and I think that's interesting because in in our own uh, culture, maybe less so um, here within the past like twenty ish years or so, but in our own culture, nakedness was a sign of vulnerability. 
Mm. I mean, well, it makes sense. You know, you, you stand up straight and you're naked. Everybody can see everything that can hurt you. Yeah. Right. You know, uh, especially, well, I don't, I, maybe not necessarily especially, but you know, if you're a man, people can see your junk. Uh, that's one way that they can hey, judge you. You know, uh, one they man's see you, junk is another man's treasure. They see that you have maybe a small uh, pee or they see they can hurt you in that way, you know, because they can kick you. They know exactly that kind of thing. And if you're a woman, you're naked, especially if you're in the presence of a really bad guy. That obviously spells disaster. Like Harold. Right. And, and I, and yeah, and the princess is dressed up in a provocative outfit. Um, Harold is loyal to Mittenham. Yes. Anyways, the uh, why though? Yeah. Anyway, the the nakedness. Sorry. Um. It, well, I, I'm almost done. We can get okay, on okay, it. Okay. But the nakedness generally is a symbol of vulnerability, right? Um. That's. Well, I'm not going to get into that. Well, but, and that, that's why I think um, that's why I think it has at least elements of of, of the feminist plight in it because there's that, mm-hmm. and I think that it's a bit of a reversal, like perseverance kind of thing. Is that the the women in here? They're not treated horribly. But they're definitely treated like they were treated, you know, previously with like catcalling and stuff like that. There's a, there's two quotes specifically. The first uh, one is when uh, uh, Mooch and Dolores go off to have fun time. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not Mooch. It's Ko Kowalski. That's what I yeah. said. Pee-pee no, time. Mooch is a different character. No, I, sa- I said I said Kowalski. You but he he was not. just thinking that he was gonna smooch. On her. Yeah, well, that's what I was getting at, but Chris cut me off. So, yeah. anyway, um, when Kowalski and Dolores go have fun time, then the rest of the boys are like, "Do they do a cheer?" And they say, "Here's to women who don't say no." Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That one's- Oh yeah, because that's right when the guy goes and mm-hmm. here's to the guy who fell. Yeah, that's the part it, yeah. I was talking about. Books. Books is the one who says here here's to the yeah. Right, we already talked about that. Died. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but so there's that, um, and then she ends up. You know, surviving for a lot longer. She dies eventually, but she goes out with the bang for sure. And then, like, um, I think, <laughs> Just I think, rev up a car early. <laughs> <laughs> I think with Serena too, when Harold is like peeking around. Yeah, I think, I think because of like, like we're talking like the vulnerability that is presented there, <clears throat> the fact that she comes out of that. You know, even though she is evil, she still does have the favorite word, power, mm-hmm. over uses, Harold. Yeah, she, she uses, uses that power. Her looks for so power. she takes what was a Weakness. vulnerability, right? Yeah. Like you said, and mm-hmm. she uses it. And I think that that's, I think that happens a lot with the female characters in this film, the two female characters. Yeah, and that's why I think that it's part, There's at least. Leprechaun uses Reeves. Wait, who's three? Oh, Dolores Reeves and uh, Zarina. Yeah, yeah, three. Sorry, but Leprechaun uses uh, Reeves' body to to get Harold. To right, but we board. don't see it, and I think that's kind of interesting. Um, well, no, I agree, but I'm saying that. But in that situation, she was helpless. She was a damsel in distress. Yeah, and so she took yeah, that she weakness. It. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. And right. used it to empower herself. And, and that's where I was going when I was discussing how in our culture it's seen as vulnerability right and i think it's very interesting that somebody uh is able to take that and flip it on its head and say this is a death sentence for you you see me at my most vulnerable and you are going to die i i think i think that's a very profound statement actually um and it's not because generally speaking a a lot of the reasons why more fundamentalist people would would say that you hold off on sex until marriage and this i mean there's a there's a lot of reasons <laughs> okay don't point to your pictures on the wall um, oh see now oh my god <laughs> i just i just understood why <laughs> yeah that's funny that's funny um, yeah that's funny shout out to <clears throat> don't <laughs> shout out man i almost take my dick in a bag of doritos okay. 10 bucks if you get that reference zach fox <laughs> Right? Why did you just peek the mic? Jesus Christ. <laughs> everybody, anyway. No, just I, gonna was, hear I, was, loud. I was just happy that you made a Zach Fox reference. I, I don't... Ten bucks. I don't know if that's who it is. It is. I need the song title. Uh, Jesus is the one... Shit. <laughs> I got depression. Shit. <laughs> Ten bucks, please. Shit. Please. All right, well, it's only for the viewers, sorry. Yeah. Listeners. I'm listeners. viewing... Listeners. I'm viewing... I'm All right, listening. Kyle, listen, what would you say? Um, I 
completely lost my train of thought on that. All right, Chris, you haven't spoken a lot. You got anything? Yes. Uh, I ended the recap with uh, the password wizard. Um, I think we should talk about that. We didn't talk about it. Okay. Well, uh, Mittenham, when he reveals himself to be a cyborg, he uh, compares himself to uh, the Wizard of Oz and the Wizard of Oz. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And he says, but unlike the Wizard of Oz, uh, I am not a fake. Yeah. And then he starts glitching out and stuff like that. And also, um, before we find out he's a cyborg, he uh, is telling Sarge, um, Sarge is like saying, hey, no, our contract's up. Uh, you know, we're gone after midnight. And he says, you will do as I so say. And he catches so himself. Say. Uh, he catches say himself so. and say he pauses so. and he goes, say so. And at first, I didn't know if that was just the actor, mm -hmm. and and he just picked himself up because I had I did notice a few things like that in the movie mm -hmm. where the actress kind of broke character for a little bit. Uh, Books laughs at something that happens. I forgot what it was. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know enough about the Wizard of Oz. I don't know enough We're about off to the, see the wizard the about the lore wizard. about who exactly the wizard is. So mm -hmm. I didn't know if you guys could elaborate more. On, on well, so so this this way. brings me to another element that I think plays part in this film is is the since we're going conflicts because that's what good storytelling has it's the conflict between science and magic. I think I think is a huge one here. Um, oh yeah. Oh, I, I don't the, know the why leprechaun. I didn't think about that. Yeah. The leprechaun is a huge like proponent for the magic. Yeah, he does. It's like the soft magic that's presented in like Lord of the Rings universe, mm -hmm. where it's just he just does things. Yeah. 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 And no one questions it because they never attempt to explain it. Right. It just is, and we believe it because it is. And then <clears throat> Mittenhand and the rest of them use technology mm -hmm. is their is their savior. And I do think the, what I can say is that in the Wizard of Oz, uh, yes, he's a fake, but it's a, a fakeness delivered through technology. Mm. I didn't know the wizard was Excuse a fake me. wizard of Oz. A facade. Yeah. I, I I never like watched it all the way through. Yeah. Oh dude, it's a classic. Yeah, yeah I know it. it is. That's why that's why when they get classics. there, they're disappointed because they can't get what they need, but the journey was how they got what they needed, yada yada yada. Anyway, right. um, yeah. the it, facade of, of technology or whatever. And so I think that that's part of where that dichotomy comes in. Mm. Is that um Mitten Hand, later known as Mitten mm. Spider, compares himself to the Wizard of Oz, says he's not a fake, mm. even though the fake, the facade of the Wizard of Oz is technology, and that's what Mitten Hand is, is technology, mm. yeah. whereas the Leprechaun mm. is the magic. So something's there. And he becomes more revolting than he initially, than, than he was, too. And I think that that's the theme of greed, is that it, it makes you more of the Leprechaun inside you. The only way you can't kill the leprechaun because the leprechaun is the entity of greed mm -hmm. and and lust. The only way to get to to defeat him is to exile him from your life. Yeah, and I I would I would I agree with pretty much everything that you just said minus minus lust. I don't think the he embodies that. Well, I, um, yeah, but, I, but it's a I'm, sub greed. Right, right. No, I I well, agree. I, I agree that greed. It well, yeah. It's it's. Yeah, it's greed for a sexual union is what lust is. You can explain it that way, sure. Um, but I, I do remember what I was going to say earlier, okay, um, about um, going back, and, and I'll, I'll just make this point real quick just because I think it's an interesting one. Um, you know, in, in fundamentalist uh, households, they say, you know, wait wait until marriage uh, for any kind of sexual intercourse, right? <laughs> yes. And uh, <laughs> shout out to... <laughs> they don't even know what we're talking about. I thought about. you were gonna do it. I was like, oh my god. Um, but any anyways, it's um the the reason behind that, I mean there's a lot of reasons behind that, but on a on a subtextual level, the reason behind that is because again, when you reveal your naked body to another person, there has to be some level of trust there for it to be a pleasant experience. And so the ultimate form of trust you could say is marriage, um, in that aspect. And so I think, um, I forget exactly why I was bringing that up, but it was something along the lines of uh, um, how they've, this movie specifically has flipped that on its head where it's, um, 
you're you're you don't need trust to show your body it's it's a way of inducing fear uh and maintaining power which i think is very interesting and if if jake's and if we're going on jake's point about feminism i think that's certainly an aspect of uh third fourth wave feminism i can't remember which one that would appear in but fear fear do you know what i'm talking about batman no well, that's what i'm talking about i was oh, doing i was uh, doing pennywise yep. yeah oh, there you go. Oh. right he's in the thing and he's like mm-hmm. and he goes there <laughs> it's, it's the end of the first one isn't yep it? yeah yeah well yeah so they're making chapter three which is what what five, was there a chapter three in the- no okay you, you, Yo, started, you yeah. started nodding yes and i was like was there i'm ready yeah. for big turtle man to show up yeah he's gamora I, or whatever. I, gamora yeah what's the turtle <laughs> He's he's the turtle uh, is uh what's her name who plays? I mean he's like an overarching like Zoe Zaldana. Zoe Zaldana, yeah. Zaldana. Uh, shout out my my dad, my real dad. Hello. I, I, I shout out my stepdad, but my real dad's a huge Stephen oh, Maturin. King fan. Is it Maturin? I don't know. The more like Maturin. Yeah, it's Maturin. Maturin. Yeah, it's Stephen King's work. Maturin. Maturin. Yeah. Sex. The turtle. Stop like, what? what? Overarching. <laughs> Maturin. Over. All right, my well, God, I can't talk over you guys. Um, sorry, go ahead, Chris. Sorry, you have to. You just have to do it. Yeah, you just gotta go for it, buddy. But then I'll you peak, do it, man. But then I'll peak, and then you, you gotta and keep then talking. You're gonna yell at me. Well, as long as you don't like go like, <laughs> <laughs> then you won't peak. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What about this? <laughs> nope, that peaked. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, Ew. watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm sure our listeners in the podcast. I, no, no, no. I, I don't want to. No, what were you going to say? I can't remember. Stephen, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, the turtle and Stephen King's work. Yeah, we already. You already said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a, you said it, and I acknowledged you. Yeah. And then he goes, "I wasn't done, guys." <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> I had something I was going to say. All right. I forgot. Are you two? Uh, Familiar. I couldn't think of the word familiar. Oh, I'm familiar. With the uh, the Pacino Pods uh, Ready or Not scale. Have y'all seen Ready or Not? Mm-mm. Oh. You mean Ready Player One? Nope. All right. Anyway, uh, since they don't know, we'll have to fix that. Um, Sorry. I'm going to give this. There's a, How many blowups happen in this? Oh. There's at least like three. Yeah, at least. It ends with a blow up. Uh, he blows up at the end. Uh, at the he, end. he blows up at the beginning with a grenade. He blows, he blows up they, at the end when he they, gets shot. Yeah, it was, well, they shoot him um, right before that the girl dies, remember? Spider, uh, spider hand blows up, doesn't he? Yeah. Nah, that's not an explosion. Well, they, they shoot the leprechaun right before that girl dies, um, the one who was having sex. Remember, she kills him, and she's like, yeah, I did it! And then he grows back out of his shoes and then pushes her off the That's ledge. at the end. That's not, not at, at the end. Not at the end. It's, it's towards the middle. The Kowal- beginning, Dolores, and the end. Kowalski's PP blows up. That's not a blow. Okay. So I think I'm going to give this a solid. Oh, this is tough. I'm going to give it a 3.75 out of 5 on the Pacino Pod Ready or Not scale. Okay. So uh, y'all have heard what we talked about. I don't remember. We talked about a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, this has been pretty sloppy. But, but also keep in mind. <laughs> you know what else is sloppy? Sloppy Joe's. Yeah. Hi, Sloppy Joe's. Joe's. Slop, slop. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, the first moment I could think. I was going to say. The, I was going to. No, that was my fiance. The first woman you thought of. I was going to say. I was going to say another woman. But then I just get the person on the wall. Oh. And then, oh, I, no. then I was like, ooh, ooh, gotta, gotta stop. And then I just looked around. And I was like, I was like, oh, Claire. <laughs> Thanks for saying her fucking name. Oh, I didn't say her last name, which is... Shit, I, I don't... What is her last name? All right, well, I'm sorry. Oh, Hera? Yeah, guys, I... Whitehead. I, oh, I apologize on, on behalf of me and Kyle. We are new to this podcast, and uh, we are going to try very, very, very... It's Kyle good. and myself. We're going, we're going to try our very darn best to live up to um, the one person that Thomas was... 
is he dead? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> rest in peace. Well, he's in Birmingham right now. Can, so yeah, yeah. Well I mean, can two, can two idiots take the place of, of one beautiful? Well, that's the that's God the best genius. That's the best part about marriage. It's two half brains forming one. Are you saying we're getting married on this? I'm podcast? saying we can. She you and Claire are married. It is yeah, 2021. Yeah. Yeah. She- All right. Well, next episode, me and Claire are going to get married. <laughs> Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. I am sorry it was a little disorienting. Uh, We'll get better at it. I'll get better at it. I thought I did great, so I'm going to keep what I did. Like I said, uh, if you think the Four four Corner universe (laughs) is is talking about Four Leaf Clover. I think it totally is. Or the Galaxy or the Clover. Or if it's the adage, the, uh, or if if this movie was uh, connected to the Cloverfield universe <laughs> because it is in space and uh, there is a monster, you can tweet us <laughs> at you can tweet us at Pacino Pollen on yeah. Twitter, uh, or any recommendation or anything like that. If you want to go into a spiel, why Kyle or why Chris? Bye. Stout and sauerkraut. Oh, shit. Stout and sauerkraut. <laughs> Stout and sauerkraut. <laughs> Stout and sauerkraut. I'm Batman. You have to say it, Kyle. Stout and sauerkraut. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> I, I was trying to have a clean end. and then you had Stout to and sour cream and onion chips. All right. Well, podcast over.